Hey everybody, it's James Portnow from Extra Credits. It's the third day of PAX. We're all exhausted and barely standing here, but today I've got Suda51 with me and James Mountain, the localizer of, um, of the Silver Case. Thank you guys so much Thank you. for coming down. Thanks for having us. And yeah, today we're just gonna talk design and the Silver Case and sort of what inspired you and made Grasshopper grow. Uh, I wanted to start this out in a place that Probably a little bit unusual for these, but I want to know about your influences. What sort of media, what books, movies, other games do you consume to sort of drive the ideas behind the games you create? Mm, yeah. um, I'm really surprised by such a deep question from the very start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> うん、やっぱ、ま、オールジャンルじゃないんだけども、何かその今の僕はどちらかというと、こう、I'm gonna do what I can here. Uh, it's not just uh, media that I tend to get inspiration from, such as books, movies, other games, stuff like that. What I like to do is check out stuff uh, kind of from my everyday life, you know, like just things around me in the house, things outside my house, uh, even just things that I'm generally interested in, again, apart from just different types of media. You probably know what I mean, but as you become older and you know, you get a career, uh, get more responsibilities, you don't have as much free time as you did when you're young. And so sometimes the best way to get inspiration is basically just to go out and just do your thing, just do whatever you do during normal everyday life and just kind of see things going on in the world. Like for example, I like going for drives. So I'll go out, just you know, drive my car around and I see you know, a big crowd of people. I see people interacting with each other, uh, people just going about their daily lives. And I see things like that and kind of get inspiration just from kind of out of nowhere, just seeing people again, going about their daily lives, uh, noticing something new about something that I've got an interest in. Uh, things like that. There's nothing really in particular that I go to uh, for inspiration. It's not like a go-to. That's a really interesting answer. That's actually, that's great um, because I very often tell young designers that uh, to craft experiences, you have to go have them, right? And too often we focus too much on just playing all the games rather than going out and living life and bringing that into our games. Um, so. Do you have any advice for young designers starting out? If there's something that you wish somebody had told you when you just began this, what would you say to them? いや、その通りあの、僕もやっぱり自分のゲームに何を表現したいか、要はインプットしたものをアウトプットする作業の中で何て言うかな、薄いものじゃなくて濃いものをなるべく出したいんですよね。なので自分の中でま、もちろんエ
I wanted to ask you, because a lot of your games push the very boundaries of what we think is possible with a game, right? A lot of your games uh, innovate and make us rethink what game is. Is there anything that you've seen recently that has really inspired you or that you feel is really doing that, is pushing the boundaries of, I mean, it can be games, can be any medium, but something that's really pushing the boundaries that uh, you would recommend other designers go take a look at because they're doing something novel and new that you, you just didn't even imagine could be done with whatever medium it is. あの、ホールライン前に初丸よね、なんか。ホールライン前。いや、いや、いや。あ、まあ、デニスとヨナさん、まあ、あの、あの2人が作ったあの作品はすごく、うーん、が新約を受けたし、あ、こんな若者たち
so what does James do? And then when just Stone Cold turns away, he goes, oh, he answers email. And I realized that had become my life. <laughs> that had become my life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's awesome to hear that and to tell young people that like, uh, making games is a lot more than just making the game. Like, there's a lot more that goes into a great game than simply the great idea. Um, so thank you so much for saying that. And this actually leads me perfectly into the silver case, but before I talk about it, I wanted to ask you too, because there's a lot of people who actually would love to do localization. We get people all the time asking us about localization, and honestly, it's never something I've done in my career, uh, so I've never been able to answer them. So maybe you can give us a little bit about uh, both what your biggest challenge was and just one or two short things on how you get involved. To be honest, um, I got involved with it kind of coincidentally. Um, I spent several years, uh, I've been living in Japan for about 18 years now, but I spent uh, about eight or nine years before I got into the game industry as a preschool teacher mm. and uh, just decided, okay, I can speak Japanese, I can speak English, I've got okay writing skills, I'll try freelance translation just to make a bit of extra money on the side, you know. And um, I found a few people online who wanted Japanese English translation projects done. So I got a hold of a guy who started giving me projects regularly. And after about a year, he said, hey, I'm going to move to Osaka where I lived and start up a company. Why don't you help me out? And that's the guy who is now the CEO of the company I work for. So uh, it really was just kind of a coincidence. There's a lot of people trying to get into game localization and there's not really that much room for that many translators and I guess as far as advice goes for people wanting to get into the industry pardon my French but work your ass off and master not only the skills of the language you want to translate from but master your writing skills mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't realize that uh, translation isn't just about understanding two languages but being able to really write really well in the target language. Right, I always say that localization is not just translation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I want to talk about the silver case because uh, I could be totally wrong about this, because memory serves, it's kind of heroic that that even got finished, right? That like you guys made it through that project way back when you were first doing it. Uh, can you tell me about some of the design decisions you made to allow the team to successfully finish the silver case on the budget you had? Yeah. あの、まず最初にグラソッパ とにかく僕とプログラマー2人とイラストレーターと背景のアーティストが1人。そうなるとプログラマー2人背景のえ、パーティカルを使ったりとか、そういうプログラマーでも実はえ、表示物って作れるわけで。2ヶ月ぐらいの当時うん、when we first started Grasshopper Manufacturer, uh, it was originally a core team, uh, so there were only uh, three core team members. And we thought we were supposed to have around 10 or so, but uh, people's schedules end up kind of shifting around and just, you know, things happen. And so uh, by the time it was 
time to start working on the silver case, uh, it ended up that there was basically a core team of just five people. And there was uh, Suda himself and uh, a background illustrator, uh, two programmers, and most of and uh, illustrator. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And so <clears throat> they're trying to make a mainly text-based adventure game, but they've got two programmers and Suda himself doing the writing, yeah. and they've got two artists, which they don't really need. And so he had to think of a way to use the, uh, you know, the art and design-based people uh, more effect not only more effectively, but you know, in a way that they can somehow make this game with the team they had. And so he had, uh, he had the designers try a lot of different things with different sorts of like film windows, uh, sorry, different sorts of windows in the game, uh, different, si uh, different types of like particles and everything. And finally they came up with uh, the system, uh, uh, they came up with a system called uh, film windows, which they use in the game, where the game is, while it's based on text, they have a whole bunch of windows constantly popping up and moving around and showing different, all sorts of information. And so uh, they had two programmers, they brought one of the programmers over to uh, design and kind of mixed up, you know, everyone's, uh, everyone's roles, everyone's duties. And somehow they were able to make it all come together just right. Uh, everyone really kind of like fit the role that they eventually ended up playing really well. And uh, yeah, they got really lucky in that the game was not only finished, but it, fin it, uh, it became finished in exactly the way they wanted to finish it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Well done, <laughs> sir. Well done. <laughs> sorry, I'm not from here. So. <laughs> I um, no, this is great because I always tell people beginning in their design that uh, games, being a game designer, is not about making the best, best imaginable game, but the best possible game with the team you have. And so you need to find out how to use all those pieces, whether it's moving a programmer to design or finding a way that the art can really add to uh, to the piece. So I love the fact that you were able to find a design solution to provide more game with the team that you had. That, that's fantastic. Uh, a lot of young people tend to think, you know, they look at video games these days and think, wow, you know, look at the technology, anything is possible, you can do anything with games. But that's definitely not the case, uh, especially with, you know, younger uh, indie creators. There's sometimes uh, extremely heavy limitations on what you can and can't do. And he's been, sorry, I've been creating games for about 23 years now, since back during the Super Nintendo days. And back then, there were obviously heavy limitations on what you could and couldn't do. And so that kind of helped me get used to working with what was possible, working with what I had. And a lot of times I come to a point where I just cannot do what it is I wanted to do with what I have. And I realized that one of the most important skills as a game creator is to kind of be able to get past that and just realize, okay, I want to do this, I can't do this. This is what I can do. Let's find a different idea. Let's find a different way to do it and kind of, you know, work with it from there. And sometimes that makes the game better. Um, but I want to ask more about the silver case though. Uh, specifically, can you talk a little bit about how the silver case relates to the rest of the games you've made? ま、ヒューマンを独立して初めて作ったゲーム、グラスオープン初めてのゲームだけじゃなくて、僕にとってオリジナルゲームの初めての挑戦だったんですよね。なので、関連性というよりかはとにかく僕自身が何を表現したい
And I think that comes through in some of my later games as well. But that's one of the, the biggest points of the silver case is, again, it was not only Grasshopper Manufacturer's first game, but also my own first game as a game creator. So uh, is there anything, and I know this is unfair to ask, but um, if you're doing it again today, is there anything you would change about the silver case? So, so there was a... 僕も今回 HD リマスター作るにあたって久々にシルバー事件とこう近い距離で向き合った時にあの一番感じたのは当時の僕自身を思い出したんですよねそれがすごく正面じゃなくて後ろ,に後ろから見た感じ要は TPS の視点から自分が見えた感じがあってで彼は本当にまあ独自したばっかの本当若手の30代の僕なんですけどもインディーズクリエイターで。まさに今パックスでたくさんゲームがあってインディクレーターがたくさんいて新しいゲームをたくさん作ってる、まあ、そ,そんな彼らと同じ境遇で,でまだ須田51と呼ばれる前の51須田っていう存在でなんかやっぱり彼の当時のエネルギーとかパッションとかあともがきだったりとかあと殺気だった感覚とかなんかそういうものが自分にとってすごく新鮮だった刺激。変な話な話んですけど自分自身に刺激を受けたんですよねだから変えたいというよりかは変えちゃいけない今の僕が彼の作品を守ろうという意識が働いたんですねなんかすごく不思議な体験でしたね。Uh, this is kind of a strange answer, but、um, you know, when we decided to make the, the remastered version of Silver Case,、uh, it was the first time in a long time that I really got back to the game and really got up, you know, got up close with it and really took a good look at it. And when I did that, I noticed something, and that was that the guy who made this game all those years ago, that wasn't Suda51. That was back when I was, you know, I was just some dude, Suda Goichi. Nobody knew who I was. I was just, you know, a young indie creator. And I was kind of in the same position as a lot, of pe- a lot of people here at PAX, you know, just a young creator, just trying to make my games, trying to put my games out there. Had a lot of passion, a lot of energy, put a lot of, you know, put everything I had in the game. And when I was playing the game, playing through the game again, I kind of saw myself back in the day, again, not Suda51, but as just some dude, you know? And the way I kind of saw myself was it was like looking at like a third person shooter type game. Like I'm kind of looking at myself from behind, like watching this guy move around and create the game and do everything with so much energy and passion. And I realized,、uh, you know, how, how hard it is. I kind of remembered how hard it is for young indie creators, like trying to make it, just trying to get their games out there. And as far as anything that I would want to change about the game if I were to redo it, Conversely, I, I wouldn't want to change anything because, although this is kind of a weird thing to say about myself,、uh, I kind of felt a lot of respect for that, su-、uh, that Goi Chisuda guy that I saw when I was remembering everything, you know? And I feel it would be really rude to change the game that this guy tried so hard to make and this guy put so much of himself into. So I kind of feel it's my responsibility to protect that guy and his game's legacy. So actually,、uh, I wouldn't want to change anything at all. In fact, I'd do what I could to make sure that nothing got changed if that were to happen. That, that's a fantastic answer. I, I really appreciate that. that. <laughs>、uh, no. So, what inspired to bring it over now? I was in the time of the press day one day. I was in the world, Japan, Japan only. Put the game out in the world and have not just Japan, but you know,、uh, overseas players play it as well. And for the past nine years in particular, I've really wanted to get it localized, remastered, and put it out、uh, for a new audience. Since the game has never seen a non Japanese release yet, there's so many people out there that haven't been able to play the game, and so many people in Japan as well who have just not had the opportunity yet. So, yeah, the last nine years, I've really wanted to put it out. Congratulations. I'm really glad to see that you got to do that. Now it's finally actually going to come out here in the States. I've been really excited about it since basically since I heard about it.、Um, but I also want to ask you had mentioned about being a young designer and doing your first project on your own. And I actually had a young man who I worked with, I used to work with, and he's about to take that step. And he asked me if I would ask you how you get someone to sort of fund, even if it's Not a lot of money, even if it's just like five guys, but how you, how you 
pitch that, how you get someone to fund something that's so sort of experimental and maybe not the sort of norm for big money making games. Well, I think I'm going to answer it. So, yes. Yeah. とにかくもう,もう僕も失敗をたくさん繰り返してきたんですよね。一回そこまで。Um, well, to answer honestly,、uh, I myself screwed up over and over lots of times too. 企画書20枚作ったら本当に成功するのは本当に一つか二つかぐらい。If I, if I put together like, you know, 20 proposals for a project, at most, maybe one or two of them would actually go through and make it. でもやっぱ感じたのは結局ディベロッパーパブリッシャーじゃないんですよね最終的には結局グリーンライト出す人っていうのは人間であって<笑>で人と人がそのゲームをやっぱ作るんですよ、まあ、ディレクターとプロデューサーが。It's not just about you know, the developer and the publisher. When it comes down to it, it's about people, you know, relationships between people. Like,、uh, you know, you've got the people who make the game, who are a director and a producer, whatever. But when it comes down to it, it's a person and another person and another person. So, the production of the game is a user, and the publisher is a person, and the publisher is a person. The publisher is a person, and the publisher is a person. 自分の担当する企画を上の人たちにグリーンライトを持っている決定権のある人たちに持っていくこともできないんですよね。Um, so for example, when you bring a proposal to someone, you're saying, hey, you know, here's the game I want to make, fund my game.、Uh, the person you're talking to basically has to become your first fan. When you put it together a proposal and bring it to someone,、uh, you know, they usually have to give it to someone higher up who's going to give them the green light or not. And so you've got to remember that on the other side of this proposal is the fans. And so, what you've got to do is, once again, whoever you propose the game to, make sure that this person becomes your first fan. Put this person in the kind of mindset where when they go to take it to their higher ups, you know, they push them to give them the green light. They say, look, this game's great, we need to make this game. So, basically, yeah,、uh, well, obviously, it's, you know, you need, to be,、uh, you need to make fans normally as well. Make sure that the guy you propose the game to is your first fan, more than anything. No, the, ah, go ahead, sorry, but not the, no, the, Kari got to know, fan, fan, is not going to be a fan. それは何かというと彼自身の情熱だったりとかこの人間を応援したいと思えるものだったりとかそういう本当に作りたいっていうエネルギーがこもっているもの本当にあ俺はこのゲームを作りたいんですでじゃあ君のそのゲームを僕の人生をかけて通すっていうそれがあればもうその瞬間に僕は多分グリーンナット通ると思うんですよねまあいや分かんない通らないかもしれないんだけどごめんなさい。だけどうんそういうものでないとこれまでもそうなんですけどやっぱりプロジェクトになった作品って本当に俺自身が作りたいゲームで担当者があこれを一緒にやろうって、まあ、本当二つ返事で見た瞬間に OK 一緒にやろうね上に通すよグリーンライト通すよっていうものだと思うんですよね。うんうん、and、uh, again, you know, you've got to make the person you propose your game to your first fan, but you also have to remember that in order to make that person your fan, in order to get your, your, get, to get your game through, you've got to show that you're really passionate about whatever it is you're trying to get through. You know, you, it's got to be something you really want to make, you're really passionate about, you need to get this game done, so that when you pitch the game to the, the first person you're talking to, You know, you've got to pitch them so that they can see this is someone who really cares about this. This is something this guy really wants to do. He really, he's really passionate about this. This really means something to him. And even if it's not something that they personally are super inter interested in themselves,、uh, that passion and that desire to really make this specific game, this particular thing, that alone can sometimes be enough to get them to green light it for you. And obviously, sometimes you're not going to get green lit, sometimes you're just going to get told to you know, take off. But、uh, that's one of the most important things is、uh, yeah, getting people to realize that this is something you really want to do. This is really your game. And that's how I've done it so far is every game that I've made, I've made sure it's a game that I really wanted to make. And as much as possible,、uh, you know, I made every game that I made in the way that I wanted to make it.、Uh, that's something that people should keep in mind is not only make the person you pitch to your first fan, but make sure that you yourself really care about it and really want to make the game the way you want to make it. That's perfect. For this young man, there's one other question that I would like to ask because he, he may not listen to me, but he will certainly listen to、uh, words of wisdom from you.、Uh, can you also talk a little bit about growing a studio? Because you're clearly not five guys trying to desperately put together a text game anymore.、Uh, 
Uh, and can you talk about some of both the best and some of the most difficult parts of moving from that little five-man team to the big studio you guys are today? うん、とにかく次の作品を作ること、次の作品を作ること。やっぱりすごい未来が見えたわけじゃなくて、一本一本作ることに必死だったんですよ。だんだんだんだん会社の知名度が上がったりとか、スタッフも増えてったりとか、作るゲームの規模が大きくなったりとかっていうことが起こったので、うん、やっぱり意識せずにゲームってやっぱ作り続けなければ先はないんですよね。ど
だけど基本的にはストーリードリブンのゲームがすごく多くてだけどもこの「シルバー事件」というゲームにはそのストーリーがたくさん詰まっていて他のゲームでは感じたことないぐらい僕のテキストとあと「ウラシナル」をやってる大岡さんっていうライターさんのテキストこの2人のテキストっていうのを大量に浴びると思うんですよね。それによってこのシルバー事件という世界観うん僕らはすごく複雑で、えー、高い層で、えー、だけど魅力的な世界を作ったつもりなんですなのでぜひこの,あのシルバー事件という世界に触れてもらってうんどっぷりと没入してもらったらすごく嬉しいし、えー、多分他のゲームとはまた違う味わいというか匂いというか体験感覚があると思うので。これはね、プレイしないと損だと思います。はい、ぜひみんな遊んでください。Uh, it's been 17 years since I made the game, but、uh, again, it was the, the debut title from Grasshopper Manufacturer and also、uh, my own personal debut title as you know, like a free indie creator. And、uh, it's re a really text heavy, text based adventure. Uh, I put a lot of time into writing the story,、uh, building this really intricate and really kind of deep world、uh, built specifically for this game. And、uh, not just myself, but、uh, another writer named Oka, who wrote the,、uh, I guess you could call it the background scenarios and kind of the background plot lines.、Uh, we both put a lot of time and energy into making these really intricate plots,、uh, characters, just the entire world feeling. And、uh, it's really deep. Uh, it's really kind of gritty and it's really complicated, but it's definitely worth playing. And I'd just be really happy if everyone tried it out and you know, let me know what they think.、Uh, it's really different from most other games.、Um, like a lot of my other games, it is really story driven, but again,、uh, it's a completely unique experience. And、uh, to be honest, I feel that、uh, not playing it would be kind of a waste, and that's really your loss. So,、uh, I'd like to have as many people as possible play the game and、uh, enjoy it. All right, I'm totally willing to go out on that note. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you also for coming and joining us.